The following is a special documentary episode of Creative Control with Vish Khanna. Drive Like Jehu played a free hometown show at San Diego's Balboa Park on August 31st, 2014. Aside from a few practices in the preceding weeks, it was the first time in 19 years that guitarist John Reese, drummer Mark Trombino, bassist Mike Kennedy, and vocalist and guitarist Rick Froberg performed together, and fans couldn't believe it was happening. It's my pleasure and honor, a lot of us uh, didn't think this was going to happen, but you know, somehow we managed to make the impossible possible. 19 years later, Drive like Jehu! That's John Reese. The reason the show happened is because his friend, Dang Nguyen, is a Spreckles Organ Society board member, and he and Reese cooked up the idea of the long doorman drive like Jehu jamming with the organ in Balboa Park. It was um, all my friends, my family. It was uh, very special. It was really cool in a setting that is very important to me. San Diego's, you know, is more than just where I live, you know. It's kind of who I am. It's part of who I am. Though Reese and Froberg are known for playing in other bands like Rocket from the Crypt, Hot Snakes, The Sultans, The Night Marchers, and Obits, among others, Drive Like Jehu's rhythm section more or less stopped playing music in public when the band ended. So the Balboa Park show is particularly significant for drummer Mark Trombino. It was like one of the best nights of my life. I, I keep saying things like that, but that I'm, I'm sincere. That was one of the best nights of my life, if not like the best night. I don't know, like it was, everything about it was perfect. Like the venue was this organ pavilion. It was outdoors, we're in San Diego. And it's, you know, like I, beforehand I was like, outdoor sucks. I don't like playing outside. The sound system's gonna suck, blah, blah, blah. No one's gonna show up. Um, we're gonna play terrible, <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And, but the venue itself was beautiful. And the time of day we played, it was like sunset, so like, it was, it was, we started, it was like dusk. And then by the time we finished, it was night and the lights were on and um, 5,000 people showed up for this thing. And we played great, you know, and it sounded good and people were into it. And like every, it just felt so good. And I was so, so happy to finally get another, just another chance to play with Drive Like Jay. Like if that had been it, I would have been completely satisfied and felt like that was a nice period on the band you know like it would have been i would have been happy just to been like that completely satisfied me we, we could stop now i i don't feel any more weirdnesses about not playing anymore i don't feel any any like animosity or any sort of jealousy like that would be fine like we did it we played our last show done i'm happy you know in the lead up to the balboa park show reese declared that drive like jehu had no future plans but then the offers kept coming to play Riot Fest and Fun 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 Festival and small club shows, and according to Rick Froberg, they were just too good to pass up. People threw money at us. I mean, what can I tell you? I mean, it's, it's like, oh, you want to give us a bunch of money to play this show and and uh, we can to play do a club show? Wonderful. Great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. All right. It sounds awesome. Let's do it. And it, and it was so it was so much fun doing it the first time. It was like, yeah, let's do this again. Why not? And if people are going to pay us for it, that's great. Because, you know, God knows we'd do it without getting paid. Yeah, I was definitely nervous. Um, oddly, though, I wasn't as nervous for that one because we only had to play five songs, and they weren't, we didn't play any burners. We didn't have, we didn't, we played all, all of our, all songs that could be played that had, had enough, that had adequate space for a, uh, an organ to sort of fit in there and uh, contribute. But, you know, we, we didn't play any burners. Um, when we played, the next time we played, huh, the Casbah or something like that, I was nervous because we had to go out there and most of our songs are just like, you know, you know, so that was, 
I'm just going to shake a little more out of you. <laughs> it's worked out. All of this has been a particularly unexpected and exhilarating situation from Mike Kennedy. Unlike the others who either played in or produced other people's bands, after Drive Like Jehu, Kennedy pretty much completely left music behind to become a chemist. For me personally, you know, being 20 years not playing with the band and then, then getting back and learning the songs again and going through uh, practices and, and getting excited about playing shows and playing that first show and then going on to play others, it's, it's, just, it's been great for me because I've been out of music pretty much, you know, the whole time. So this is, this is wonderful. Drive Like Jehu were originally only around for five years. That run between 1990 and 1995 yielded two classic albums, 1991's self-titled masterpiece and its stellar 1994 follow-up Yank Crime. Merge Records also released a two-song single in 1992. Other than a compilation appearance, that was pretty much it. But something about their sound, post-hardcore maybe, but definitely loud, fierce, emotive rock and roll, and their mysterious legacy has taken on mythological proportions among underground music aficionados. Where did they come from? What was their sound? Why did they disappear in 1995, and what brought them back together in 2014? Now that they're touring again, what does the future of the band look like? Some of these questions will be answered here, right now. Featuring interviews with all four band members and other people they collaborated with along the way, this is the story of one of the greatest rock and roll bands that very few people seem to know anything about. This is the story of Drive Like Jehu. (laughs) 